Ladies and gentlemen, how many of you have lost the chess game in seven moves? Don't answer that. This is not supposed to be a therapy session. How many of you have won a chess game in seven moves? Don't answer that either, because it's probably the former is much more common than the latter. Well, you might be 700 ELO, 300 ELO, 1,000, 1,400, 2,000, and so on. But what if a grandmaster lost the chess game in seven moves? Well, it must have been a bullet game. Gotham, one of your stupid clickbait titles. Must have been a rapid game. I don't know, somebody punched him. He was drunk. Nope. None of those things. We are currently in the European Championship, a very prestigious tournament that is held every year in Europe. Shocking, right? And a lot of the best players in Europe compete in it, uh, and uh, it produces some incredible champions. And this was a game played in the early rounds between Nijad Abbasov from Azerbaijan and Sabino Brunello from Italy. And what you are about to witness will shock you, as this was a 90-minute game of chess between two very, very good players. Nijad began the game with the English opening, the move c4. Black responded with c6. Oftentimes, players with the black pieces that are intending to play uh, various Slav openings will play c6. And also, you have to be prepared for white to suddenly play Akaro Khan. So you have to be ready for what's called a pseudo Panov variation with c4, because the regular Panov variation in the Karo Khan uh, looks like this, d4 and c4 with a capture. So c4, c6 is already quite committal because black is basically saying I have no interest in putting my knight to c6. Now you're probably salivating because if you think about the natural development of the game, how did black lose the game from this position in four moves? Black just played three of the seven moves. What percent is that? Approximately 42, 43, right? Um, I think. Let's see, three out of seven, 14. Yeah, around that, right? How did black lose the game from here? So black developed bishop g4, and the idea could be to, at times, capture this knight. For instance, if white plays... I don't know, it's actually kind of hard to uh, come up with a move. But let's just say on a very, very simple level, something like this, okay? Damage structure, isolate upon. And, and black's, black's actually very happy here, because black is going to go here, develop the knights, rock solid. So after bishop to g4, white usually goes bishop g2, or some form of knight to e5. And in this game, Abbasov played knight to e5 immediately targeting the bishop on g4. Now, there's a couple of places to put this bishop. Very natural retreat is to do this, and now it's kind of a London, but this knight is a little bit offside. Another very decent move, according to chess theory, is to play bishop e6. It looks incredibly dumb, but the idea of the move bishop e6 is you're adding a level of pressure to this pawn, and you always can play something like knight d7, where white really doesn't want to make three knight moves and just trade. That just doesn't make any sense. Not to mention that then black can always do this too. So sometimes the bishop will go to e6, but in this game it went to f5. Now, if I asked you to look around here, by the way, we're four out of seven moves on the way there. How on earth is black going to lose this game? It, what? Right? How? This just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> what? Well, uh, in this position, white plays the move queen b3. Okay, queen b3 makes sense. And I just want to point something out. Black spent six minutes on this move. That is not a good sign. It's not a good sign, because if you're going to commit to this, you've got to have an answer to the move knight e5, right? I mean, you, you have to know the theory. So bishop f5, I'm not coaching Brunello, he's a much better player than I am, but I'm just saying, like, six minutes on move four, when you play bishop g4, you have to be ready for knight e5, right? So bishop f5 and now queen b3, and, and now, now we have another situation here where black is under some pressure. When black made this whole plan to move the light squared bishop, the pawn on b7 is weak. It's not losing. Black can defend it like this. Black can defend it like this. And black can also do this. And the move queen b6 is a very, very legitimate move. The idea is that if white trades, black is very happy with the opening of the a-file and is actually already threatening to win material with bishop, b bishop b1, rook b1, and actually rook a2, which is kind of hilarious. So the queens see each other. However, when the queen goes to b6, it completely removes its eye off of d5. Uh, and in this position, white intends to make, you know, to take advantage of that. There also is this very fascinating idea, queen to f3, uh, which attacks the bishop. And if the bishop goes here, obviously queen f7. But if this, then there's bishop h3. So just like a completely, completely wild line where uh, black can very quickly get a completely lost position, and uh, that's not what happened, but I'm just telling you those are the possibilities. 
It was very tricky when this queen comes out with that knight. That's under fire. This is an idea. That's under fire. Black plays queen b6, and now white takes on d5. Okay. So far, so good, right? So, very simple and right off the bat. If black does this, white does this, and is a pawn up. Black does not want that. So, before black takes the pawn, black has to take the queen. Folks, we have now made six moves for black. How is black going to lose the game? This is the move. This is move seven. Black to play and lose. Oh, that's very easy. Uh, bishop here, lose the bishop. Okay, black to play and not make a move that's stupid. Uh, F6? Okay, not a bad guess. Not bad, but... How's black going to lose? I don't understand. Well, in the game, black played bishop e4. Bishop e4. How does that lose the game? It loses the game. Because black's entire idea was obviously the rook is under attack. So was the pawn. And he probably thought white will go here, and I will take, and life will go on. But after bishop 2e4, Nijad Abbasov played the following move. Pawn takes c6. What? Oh, I get it. If bishop takes, I take and the rook is trapped. Nope. Because if this, this, this. Huh? Then what's the winning move? Oh, it's obvious. C7. No, because the knight just moves. And you can't queen. Wait a minute. So why is bishop e4, pawn takes c6, bishop takes h1, losing? It's losing... Because in this position, white can sacrifice the rook! Rook takes it! Oh my god! And the idea is that the rook now is... Tra it, it has no choice. It has to take on a7. And then the pawn is guaranteed a promotion. And you win the game. You make a queen. And it's... Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Rook takes a7. Oh my god! What a trap! Bishop e4, pawn takes, and if black does this, rook a7 is incredible. Now, of course, black can, you know, just lose all their pieces in the following way and just be dead lost, but d takes c6. Now, you will notice, according to Stockfish, it's only losing if black takes the rook. It's only plus nine if black takes the rook, but black lost the game in seven moves. That's crazy! <laughs> rook takes a7 is one of the most unbelievable traps I have ever seen. Pawn takes, rook a7, c7, and you can't stop promotion. So, instead of going down that way, black decided to do this. Here's the problem. Uh, it's now move 8, and black is down one pawn. Not only is black down one pawn, he has to live with a 20-minute time disadvantage, and the psychological damage of, of blundering so early. That, that is a very real thing. Making a mistake that early in the game, he's now got to defend this position where uh, he is clearly, clearly, clearly in trouble. And white plays this move f3 now, and if you take the knight, I'm just going to go here. And then I will do this, do this, do this, do this, and you're dead lost. So instead of that, black tries to play knight d4 to try to get into c2. Now, you may ask yourself, oh, wait, none of that happened? Well, no, because a grandmaster saw that, right? So look at the time spent, right? He spent 10 minutes because he realized rook a7 is... He, he, had, he had 71 minutes to figure out that rook a7 was the trap, which he did, and then he didn't fall for it. That, that is, of course, commendable, but he's already losing. And now white plays rook a4, which is even more spectacular. Uh, and uh, bishop takes b1... Rook takes d4. What even is this position? I mean, this is one of the most ridiculous games I've ever seen. And uh, black plays f6. The, 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 what, what, is, what is the bishop on b1 doing? The thing is, according to the computer, black can actually still hold this. Point 0.2 is a very uh, bold recommendation. I mean, it's like point 0.6, point 0.7 probably. But um, once you blunder what he blundered in the opening... I'm not sure you can bounce back. Bishop e4, d takes c6 is a crazy idea. Absolutely. I mean, oh my god. Oh my god. What an idea. And when we got down finally to this position, e5, rook c4, 
Um, black was still under severe pressure. Uh, wh this rook is, uh, this bishop is trapped. If you take to try to get out, I'm not worried about having damaged pawns because I'm just going to go d4 next. I'm going to crack that open, get my bishop out legally, get my bishop out legally, get my king and rook out. And uh, at the grandmaster level, this is a completely lost position. Uh, but this game ended uh, in emphatic fashion. Black played the move bishop to d6, and white did not touch the king, did not touch, you know, can't, can't even really move the bishop. Played the move knight c5. So targeting this pawn on b7. Um, and it goes from bad to worse here. Like, if you play rook b8, I'm going to go here, get my bishop out, get my bishop out. So black decides to play b5, and uh, white slides back. Knight develops. Now e4 controls the development of the knight on e7. And uh, look how much time black has spent on the game. We go from 40 minutes down to 6 because the position is so dreary. He lashes out with b4. The rook slides up. And now here comes pawn to d4. This bishop is just completely stuck. I mean, it, it made it down there, and there is no way home. We have pawn takes, and now bishop f4 takes, takes, and black resigned. Down 43 minutes on the clock. And with a bishop in prison. Have you ever seen a chess piece in prison? The bishop made it to the opposite side of the board and cannot escape. Anywhere it goes here, someone can take it. And if it goes to a2, it can't take the pawn ever because the knight on c5 protects it. White's next move is literally rook to c1. And if it's not rook to c1, it's going to be sliding the king and bishop out of the way and then taking the rook, using the rook to take the bishop like that. Black just resigned. He has nothing. If he tries to fight back with knight g6, white takes. If you try to take on f4, I will move my bishop out. I will move my king. Your, your bishop is still completely stuck. What even was this game? The average rating of this game is like 2570. This is crazy, right? This all came from a very offbeat uh, 95 kind of system, which is like very, you know, very, very tricky system. Queen b3 coming out early and black could have been solid. You know, could have, could have played a little bit more close to home. But then... This is one of the nastiest traps. I mean, oh my god. Bishop takes h1, not taking because then this, not pushing because then the knight moves. Rook takes a7. Good god. Take a bow. I mean, what really, what can you do? And black just could not fight back. I mean, it was like flatlined. He tried his best, but... The position was tough, and a very nice win uh, over Abbasov. And a tough one. Tough one, uh, tough one for Brunello. But, I mean, obviously, he's a, he's a very, very good player. And these things happen. These things happen in sport. These things happen in chess. So, that's how you can beat a Grandmaster in seven moves. Or lose in seven moves, depending on if you're a pessimist or an optimist. Uh, try, who knows? Maybe, maybe some of you can go try this in your own games. You know? Do this if they play bishop g4 hit him with a little 95 queen b3 uh but uh yeah what a game indeed i'll see you in the next video get out of here